Thank you everyone for attending today's Crow product tour, Crow Professional Services Automation, the customer centric PSA. Lost to show in the next 30 minute demonstration, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm logged into my dashboard here and the first thing that I'm going to see is at a glance, everything with respect to my services organization on my services dashboard, as you can see here, whether it be revenue summary, where are we with respect to services revenue, how much we've invoiced, what we expect, what we've recognized to date for revenue recognition, what was our baseline revenue, to supply and demand by role, so capacity planning, project status, task status, utilization information by resource, by role. If I scroll down here a little bit, I can see my, my top projects by billing, average hours spent per project, my total invoice, my total margin, and I can even see a breakdown of where our money came from with respect to, to project margin. And this is just an example of a services dashboard. As I start my day, I can see at a glance everything and where we are with respect to my services organization. And of course, Crow delivers a completely configurable dashboard or reporting tool where you can create your own dashboards, reports, uh, just by simple drag and drop ease, as you can see here. But before I go any further, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start off, just switch gears here to a customer or an account. So we're going to kind of take it from the start and go all the way through a, a services process. So here uh, I'm looking at an account, a customer of ours, uh, my Acme Corporation. And I can see everything about this customer. And this is the account or customer record delivered with Crow. Uh, we are uh, built native on the Salesforce platform. You do not need to be a Salesforce customer to use Crow and you still get access to accounts, customers and contacts and so forth. But here I can see on this account, all my contacts, my opportunities. If I do use Salesforce, my support cases. Uh, but if I scroll down a little bit more here, you can see all of my services proposals. And if I go ahead and look at a specific services proposal, this is part of Crow's CPQ or Configure Price Quote Services Proposal Statement of Works and Contracts and so forth. Here I'm creating a proposal, maybe some, for some new or add-on work with this customer. Uh, I have some proposal lines that I've created. These proposal lines can be based on resources or roles or fixed fee items, whatever it may be, budgeted costs and so forth. So I can build up my proposal with uh, what are called proposal lines. And as I'm building that proposal here on the right side, I have this embedded report where uh, I can see an ongoing running of what's the estimated revenue for this proposal, what's my margin going to be based on the budgeted costs, as well as, of course, the, the, the anticipated cost of what this proposal looks like as well as I'm building up uh, this proposal. Now, I might have created this uh, services proposal from scratch or I might have imported this in from a project. So I've created a project or have a project template and I can import that in from the project as a starting point for this proposal. Uh, for those that use Salesforce, I might have imported this in from an opportunity. So we can import in those opportunity, opportunity product line items as well. And here you can see down below, we can also sync back to that opportunity as we're working on this proposal. Uh, as well. Now, if I synchronize this or imported this from a project, uh, one of the nice things is, is as I'm working the services proposal, I can uh, work on the proposal and specifically the tasks and the Gantt chart, add new tasks and so forth, and sync this back up to my proposal uh, so I can work on this project uh, and build up this project from, from the bottom up, if you will, as I'm building this proposal for my customer, and then I can uh, sync, back that, uh, sync that back up to the project, if you will. Uh, what I have when I have a version of this proposal that I might want to send to the customer, <clears throat> what I can also do is I can generate a proposal here. Uh, and we have built in integration with Conga, uh, with another product called WebMerge that you might be using or familiar with, or you can even uh, just extract this data to Word or another uh, a document generation tool you use. But in this case, I'm, I'm showing our built in uh, Conga integration with a lot of you on the, on the call might use. But here, of course, what I'm doing now is I built this Conga template to support uh, how you create a statement of works or proposals using your templates and, and your data. Uh, and it's uh, integrated that data, merged that data, if you will, with proposals and projects and really any data within Crow can be, can be synchronized into this proposal. Now I've created my proposal, as you can see here, uh, with data directly from my proposal. And I can go ahead and send that directly uh, to the customer as well. Uh, and once the customer has agreed or has accepted that proposal, 
and maybe I've created a different proposal version as well, uh, then I can move that status to client accepted and mark that as the current status and we can all celebrate uh, that that proposal has been accepted and we're ready to start that project. Uh, and from this point, uh, we can uh, synchronize back to that project any details that have not been synced back to the project. Or if I haven't created a project yet because I created this proposal from the ground up, uh, then I can uh, go ahead and create a project directly from this uh, proposal and then start uh, managing that project. So with that, let's actually switch gears and let's start managing a project. So what I'm doing now is I'm navigating to the My Projects tab where uh, project managers, consultants will uh, manage uh, the projects on a day-to-day -day basis. I can see all my projects here. I can filter. I'm going to go ahead and just click into a particular project called the Client Implementation Project. And I can span and, and look at all tasks and subtasks and so forth. I can see all of my tasks, who's assigned those various tasks, where we are with respect to those tasks, start date, due date, duration, progress, hours burned, and so forth. Of course, I can switch my my focus here and maybe view other information such as what's the estimated hours on all these tasks and maybe which tasks are milestones uh, and so forth. Uh, but I'm just gonna go back to my task information. What I can also see is I can just open up this embedded analytics. So as I'm working my project, uh, I can always see in real time what's our percentage complete, what's our current project health, what are our hours look like, whether it be estimated, scheduled, billable, logged, and so forth. Uh, what's my burn look like and how much we've made, what's my margin, and so forth. And this is completely configurable um, uh, by you as a, a customer as well. Uh, now that I'm looking at this particular task in the project, if I want to just look on this particular uh, task sales to service transition call. I'll just click in on that and now I can start managing more uh, granular level task details with this project such as who's scheduled or assigned to this particular task. If I want to just open this up I can see who's actually entered time on this task versus scheduled time and maybe I need to assign more resources to this particular task. Um, I can add anyone I want right up here but if I want to search for resources uh, and it's going to default in the project role assigned to this task, the skills associated to this task, Maybe I just want to search for Salesforce skills. Go ahead and click search. And it's going to bring me in descending order here of the availability of resources and who might be available to pick up this particular task on this particular date. So it's looking at this date, who's available, who's scheduled on other projects. It's also showing me placeholders uh, that are also scheduled meeting the search criteria on other projects that I might want to take into consideration as I staff this particular project or task. So I'm looking at this at a task level. We're going to look at this at a project level in a minute. Uh, I might want to manage checklist items for this particular task and the completion of those checklist items. You can even uh, set up the system to uh, configure the percentage complete of the task to be on taskless completion. Um, maybe I even want to enter time. So instead of having to navigate away to my timesheet, I can enter time right here from the task, whether it be just manually entering in the time worked, uh, or I can even start my timer here. So I could start my timer uh, and I can go away, even log out of the application, come back in, uh, pause my timer if I'm on break or if I'm just going to work on another task and then uh, stop that timer and save that time that I've entered. And all of this time expense managing projects is available from a, a mobile device as well. Furthermore, I have a lot of things that I can do while I'm managing my project. I can see uh, and manage all of my activities, such as all my email. Uh, we support uh, email collaboration, email chain, so you can email a customer, they can email you back, and it's all tracked in here. Um, project notes in this example here. I can add new activities, such as log an email, a call, a note, an event. I can also see a nice timeline of activity, of important activity that has occurred within this project, such as I can see this task status recently changed, uh, total logged hours exceeded the estimated hours for this particular task, and as I scroll down, I can see all significant activity. There was a new project assignment added, project risk was added, the project health changed, and so on, and all of this is reportable uh, and kept within the system as well. And of course, this being a project, you would expect that uh, I'm going to manage uh, the project from a Gantt chart. So here I can see the Gantt chart for this particular project where you can track all your dependencies and predecessors and lag days. And I can drag and drop and move out this project. It's going to update that for me. Uh, and here I can add uh, any number of fields and inline edit and, and uh, update all of those fields, add new tasks in line right from here as well. Uh, export that to PFD, a PDF, PNG, CSV, MS project. You can also import in. Uh, from MS Project as well. So managing my projects 
uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with this great user experience. Now, uh, I mentioned or showed uh, assigning a task uh, in searching for a resource at a task level. Uh, I might want to do that at a project level, and I have some placeholders maybe on this project. So I can look at the resource plan for this particular project who's scheduled. I can actually also see actual hours here, which is this depicted here with these two rows. So scheduled versus actual hours. And I can see I have this placeholder here represented by this blue silhouette. Looks like I have the staff a senior consultant on this project. I can create a resource request, or if I have the ability to do so, I can go ahead and staff this directly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove some criteria that defaulted in from the project assignment and just say that I'm looking for someone with Salesforce skills. And the system knows I'm looking for this consultant requirement, 240 hours over this duration, looking for these skills. Uh, and when I'm searching, and as you saw here, I have a number of different filters available to search from. Uh, it's going to return uh, people that match my criteria, and I can see here, oh, these two resources might match criteria. It looks like they don't have, uh, or it looks like they do have the total hours availability during this time frame. Uh, I can also see, which is a really uh, nice uh, and unique feature with Crow, is that not only can I see potential resources that are available and what their availability is from an hours perspective, I can also see what the net availability is, taking into consideration placeholders that I have not yet staffed on other projects projects that also meet my uh, search criteria. So I do want to take those placeholders into consideration because I do eventually need to staff them as well. Uh, but if I want to go ahead and uh, select both of these and maybe compare these two resources, I can compare these two resources and some additional detail, uh, what team, region, practice, location, target utilization, bill rates, cost rates, these can be hidden uh, from a security perspective for those resources as well. And then I can go ahead and book uh, and replace that resource on the project and all tasks associated uh, to that um, project as well. Now, if you wanted to have an approval process or a centralized resource planning process, we also have the concept that I mentioned around resource requests. So you can request a resource uh, and then the resource planner can go ahead and, and manage that as well well. All right, so carrying on, uh, we've managed projects. Now, as a consultant, I might be working on uh, many projects or as an independent consultant that you might be utilizing on your projects. So the My Work page here is where, as a consultant or as a, uh, a, um, a person assigned to this project, I can manage all of my tasks that might cross many projects, as you can see here. And I can see where all my projects are. I can drag and drop as I'm completing them. I have a number of different filters available to me, as you can see here. So maybe I just want to filter and look at this client implementation project. And only have one task, it looks like, that I'm working on here. And as we saw on the project page, I can schedule resources, I can uh, complete time against this, I can manage checklists or collaborate on this particular task, uh, add notes, uh, anything I can do really uh, on this task I can do right from here as I'm dragging and dropping and manage all my task activity uh, right from the uh, My Work page. Uh, and this is called the card or the Kanban view. Uh, maybe I might prefer this due date view as we call it so I can see all my tasks that are overdue versus today, this week, next week, and later. Uh, and I can multi-select, you can see here, and complete these tasks or uh, change assignees if I have the ability to do so. Uh, or maybe I prefer the calendar view. So I want to see all of my tasks in a, a nice calendar view, and I can still click in on these tasks and manage these tasks, uh, as we saw from the previous view as well. So that's kind of bottom-up task management uh, called uh, My Work. Now, managing projects, managing work. Uh, now, from a resource planning perspective, I might want to see where everyone's working, what's their availability, utilization, uh, and you can see all of this from the resource planner. So here I see the resource planner, uh, and this color coding, I've uh, updated this in this demo environment. You can choose the color coding of what overscheduled versus aligned scheduled versus underscheduled looks like. And I can see kind of the color coding of project assignment schedules here uh, as well, and I can also even manipulate that if I have the ability to do so. Uh, so here, uh, if I uh, open up and uh, click on someone, I can see all the projects they're working on. I can also see time off on holidays, so I can take that into consideration in scheduling with our time off and holiday schedule uh, functionality. Uh, and I can just simply drag and drop and, and add time to someone on a particular project. What I'm viewing now is 
is time at uh, what we call a planned or a project level. Uh, I can even drill down into a task level called the schedule view, and I'll just open that up, and I can see that Amit's working on these projects. And if I can go one step further and see all the tasks that Amit is working on, I can see he's scheduled on this training webinar. And these color coding differences here show me that I can actually not only have project color coding, such as is the resource booked versus soft booked on this project, I can have different task statuses, such as uh, is he booked soft booked hold on a particular task even at a particular time frame so i can take that into consideration from a scheduling perspective and of course i can drag and drop as we saw and add more time here maybe i just want to add more time and oh you can see here that uh based on our configuration we can also highlight if this resource is going to be over scheduled uh based on their work schedule and target utilization and all projects that this person is scheduled on uh, and then I can wish I can continue if I don't mind over scheduling him but of course if I don't want to I can cancel that uh, as well uh, uh, one of the other nice views that we have here is well you can see what people are scheduled on but what you might really be interested in what's their availability so here I'm not looking at what they're scheduled on I'm actually looking what their availability is uh, based on uh, of course what they're scheduled on uh, and I can uh, schedule right from here as well Finally, uh, maybe I'm uh, most interested in just see what's everyone's utilization, uh, and I don't have some great data here, and maybe I want to see that uh, in percentages as well. So here I can see Rebecca was 100% utilized this week, 60% this week, 13% this week, and I can see where that utilization was derived from. Looks like most of it on this client implementation project here. And of course, in your environment, this would be filled up based on all resources entering in time, and I can see their utilization. Of course, you can report on it, but nice to see uh, in real time here as well. So I've uh, managed projects, managed my time, my resource planning, um, of course, I would be entering in time, uh, whether it be directly from the task I was showing, uh, from the timesheet page, I can enter time here from a mobile device, right from this rapid enter of time, right from here as well, from any page. Uh, at the end of the day, though, uh, if it's a billable project, I may want to invoice my clients. So we can generate those invoices, uh, those billing events, uh, and the system will automatically pull back. Uh, any uninvoiced and data between a time period that you're invoicing for, as you can see here. And then I can go ahead and, and automatically create those and generate those invoices. And as you can see here, we support a number of different billing methods out of the box, time and expense, installment billing, recurring billing, immediate or fixed fee, um, percentage complete billing, even retainer-based project billing for managed services that we support uh, out of the box with Crow as well. And if I look at a generated invoice, if you're going to generate invoice from Crow, which you don't need to do, you can just integrate that to your uh, financial system. But if you're going to invoice from Crow, I can see all of the invoice data that you can see here, such as my, my invoice line items, my time entries, my expenses, any fixed fee items, and so forth. And I can preview that PDF, and we've got a number of different configuration settings available for this PDF. Um, if I scroll down as well, uh, after page one of this invoice here, I can see I've decided to turn on that the client wants to see it a detail of all the tasks and maybe even notes uh, of, of time that this person worked on. Um, I can also see statement of expenses that the client might want to see and I can even attach my expense receipts as well. And as of the latest release of Crow, we also support attaching PDF expenses uh, to the invoices that I send uh, the client as well. And as I stated, you might generate the invoice from Crow, or you might just post and integrate that to uh, your financial system. Uh, and if I just scroll down here to the integration hub, you can see here all of the pre-delivered real-time integrations that we support uh, to financial, to productivity applications, to CRM applications, and not only Salesforce, but HubSpot and Pipedrive and Zendesk Cell, which is their CRM, Xero, uh, uh, QuickBooks Online, on-premise, Sage Financial, Sage Intact, Accounting Seed. We have a connector for NetSuite uh, as well, Jira. Uh, so all of these are delivered with Crow, real-time integrations that we can be configured uh, for your environments as well. So I've managed projects, I've managed my tasks, I've entered a timesheet, I've generated an invoice, I've maybe integrated that to my financial application. Uh, now what I might want to do is I might want my customers, my end, your customers, to have direct access to collaborate on their project success. 
So here I've just navigated over to a community. Uh, this is called our customer partner community. Uh, these can be your customers, your partners, your independent consultants that are working on your projects and your clients' behalf. And this can be completely branded uh, uh, for your organization. I've just put our brand here, as you can see. And then you can identify, well, what do we want to showcase to the client, make available to them? So maybe on the homepage, they want to see all of the projects that they have access to or their tasks. Um, and if it's an independent consultant or a consulting partner that you're using, uh, they can manage their time and their billable utilization. I can see here and what time was entered for this week. Uh, they can use this chatter collaboration mechanism to collaborate real time. Uh, they can enter time. And even as a customer, uh, they can navigate to the projects tab here. Um, pick a project and maybe it's only the one project uh, that they are working on with you. They can see any project details that you would want them to see. Uh, they can even collaborate on the Gantt chart or just view the Gantt chart in a read-only mode. Uh, this is all configuration depending on how you want to work with your clients for project success. So here I can see uh, the uh, Gantt chart. They can even see the status report. Uh, this is our uh, delivered status report. It can be emailed to the client um, uh, as well as uh, having a link to it. Uh, and of course, I can see it directly from uh, this page as you can see here uh, as well. And if they're an independent consultant um, uh, that's working on behalf, they can even enter time right from here as well that's going to be part of billing uh, to the end client. So this is uh, customer communities uh, that you can give direct access to your clients or partners uh, so that they can work successfully on uh, your clients and your project outcomes. Now, I've worked on this project. Uh, we've got this project uh, live for the customer. Uh, customer hopefully is happy, um, and we want to move on to the next project, if you will. But as I stated, hopefully, well, that's not necessarily the insight that we want. We'd like to analyze and make sure that our projects are successful, our clients are successful. If you're a software company, making sure that um, you know you have high NPS, they're not going to churn. If you're a consulting company, you want to make sure that you delivered a successful project uh, so that you can repeat that same type of project with other customers. Uh, so uh, what we can do here is just move over here, uh, is uh, one of the newer features that Crow delivers is the ability to create surveys. And you can send those surveys to your clients at the end of a project. You can send the survey directly from a project, even from a customer account. Uh, and I've created a couple surveys here. Let's look at this survey, uh, annual survey. So here I've created some survey questions, such as this NPS survey question that you might be familiar with. On a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend Crow? On a scale of one to five, a CSAT type question or even a free form type question. And I can, of course, brand that to the survey. I can create as many surveys as I want. And as mentioned, uh, I can uh, easily, whether it be at a project, maybe at the end of a project or at a customer level, uh, I can go ahead and send that survey. And here I can choose the survey that I want to send. It's going to automatically default in contacts for that project and I can add others. Um, and then I can select the survey that I want to send uh, and go ahead and send them that survey. And when the end customer receives that survey, uh, they can log into their email, which I'm doing now. They'll get an email uh, branded by you and you'll configure this email. And then they can go ahead and begin that survey. And here I've just opened up the survey, which has that one NPS question on it. And I can go ahead and complete that survey and submit that response. And that response is going to come back into the system. And then you can analyze that in reports and dashboards uh, and really learn from that experience of which projects were successful from a customer's perspective and why and take the appropriate action on why your projects are successful or what learnings did you uh, uh, um, understand from those surveys and, and take the appropriate action or changes on those projects uh, for future projects to increase your success. So that is surveys. And then finally, managing projects and tasks and time and billing and resource planning, surveys, customer communities. Uh, finally, I showed one dashboard, but uh, you can create your own dashboards and reports as well as the ones that uh, we deliver. Uh, out of the box as well. So if I look at some delivered reports that our customers manage uh, their services business with, um, one is a, 
uh, project forecasting report. So we have a forecasting uh, engine, if you will, within Crow. And here I can forecast as far out into the future as data exists within the system. So if you've scheduled resources on a project for three years into the future, we can forecast what that revenue might look like um, if we know how you're going to bill in that project based on your billing type. So uh, we can forecast that and of course compare that with actual as far into the future as data exists and we forecast everything, whether it be revenue, milestone payments, retainer payments, costs, and everything uh, when we run this forecasting process and you can you can run this report and analyze uh, this report as well. Uh, here's a nice report which is called supply and demand by role. So here what I'm looking at is at any point in time, apologize my data is not the greatest here, but at any point in time I can see how much has been scheduled, what's the availability, and I can see what the net capacity is from a supply and demand perspective by role, in this example, by time as well. And, and you can modify this to look at um, uh, active projects. You can also look at pipeline projects if you're using Salesforce uh, in opportunities, and we can create uh, projects from opportunities, and we can look at pipeline projects as well. Here's a utilization by month report, simple utilization, just looking at the average billable utilization uh, by resource uh, by month and drilling down into specific utilization by a particular resource. And then of course, dashboards, we took a look at the services dashboard. <clears throat> I can take a look at the project financials dashboard as well. I'd have to refresh that. So whether it be project margin, revenue, deferred revenue, revenue backlog, revenue recognition, time and expense billing forecast, and so forth. So with that, I want to thank you for attending this 30-minute demonstration of Crow Professional Services Automation. Uh, this demo will be recorded and sent, uh, the recording will be sent to you. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Look forward to speaking with you soon.